as Boris Johnson makes impossible promises about what Britain will be able to negotiate when it comes to Brexit talks and as what a post-Brexit relationship with the EU could look like stands in limbo, businesses are left with a bit of a conundrum on how to position themselves. Earlier, I asked David Bell, a Vice-Chancellor at the University of Reading, what a Brexit spells for corporates. This is a very curious period because we know that the exit negotiations won't begin until 2017. So in one sense, it's business as usual. Yet in another uh, very profound way, it's a period of great uncertainty. So I think everyone's just poised to see how the negotiations go when they start in the new year. In fact, I picked up a report from a financial services firm Hitachi Capital this week, which showed that one third of British companies have been rethinking their investment plans after the referendum. And the figure that they've put at that, 65.5 billion pounds worth of investments that have now been abandoned. Is that prudent, uh, a step for business to take right now as it tries to make sense of it all? I think it's un not unreasonable for businesses to wait and see. We've had one or two examples already of uh, businesses making investment decisions. For example, the Nissan car manufacturing company decided to reinvest in the north of England, but that was with quite a lot of government help to do so. So I think businesses will be waiting to see what the business environment looks like. Will Britain remain open for business and will it still be a good place to invest in the future? Having said all of that, on your trip to South Africa, you've been highlighting that the Brexit decision cannot be used as an excuse for business leaders not to adapt, not to step up to the plate in finding new solutions and new ways of doing business. So what kind of shifts are we starting to see? We've all been very used to technological shifts in recent times, but I think 2016 has demonstrated that economic and political shifts are as likely to happen. I think the key message for business, as it is for all institutions, is don't stick yourself in a position where you can't move quickly and adapt to new circumstances. But, but I think we have to be cautious here that we don't create an impression that somehow it's paralysed in Britain, that nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. Businesses are still active, they're still thinking about investment, and it's up to the politicians now to ensure that that environment continues. I know you've been highlighting right now that we're seeing businesses uh, adopting more so a wait-and-see approach, but are you seeing seeing uh, any significant shifts in business models right now? At the moment, it's not yet, and it's too early. I think what businesses are concerned about is the movement of staff. Uh, the EU has allowed free movement of labour, and that's been very successful and has been to a great benefit in the UK. I think there is a worry that if the immigration rules change as a result of Britain leaving the EU, that the talent that's always been drawn to the UK might go elsewhere. And yet, while you've got some businesses disinvesting or moving headquarters, you've got a company like Google uh, announcing that it's going to be setting up a head office in London, that it sees uh, you know, the city as a key technological hub. So uh, we can't actually discount the opportunity uh, that is being identified right and now. And that was one of the arguments made by those in favour of leaving Leaving the EU that actually we would somehow be unlocked from all the bureaucracy that the EU brings. Now, again, four or five months in, let's not uh, be too definite either way. But Britain has always been an open country. It's always attracted the best talent. Companies like investing. We're a centre of the financial world. There is no reason why that won't continue uh, after Brexit. But uh, there's also a lot of concern in terms of a uh, cost of doing business. Uh, we've had uh, uh, Labour former Cabinet Minister Lord Mandelson saying that a hard Brexit could lead to $1.2 billion bombshell for business Brit uh, uh, businesses. And that bill is going to be... Uh, footed by the companies and consumers themselves. How much of a concern is that uh, for business? Right I now? think one big advantage the EU has brought over the years is the ability to negotiate trade deals that affect all the countries uh, in the Union. And that has certainly been a save, mm -hmm. uh, a matter of saving for business, even though sometimes we'll co people will comment on the costs. So I think Lord Manderson was concerned about the bureaucratic cost. I think he was also concerned about prices rising. But again, let's be cautious. One of the things that we have to do in the UK is talk up our prospects and not talk them down. And certainly as a university leader, I'm doing exactly the same thing. British universities like British businesses are still open and the UK is a highly welcoming place. Well, that was David Bell, Vice-Chancellor at the University of Reading. After the break, it's Talking Technical with Julieta and France. I'll see you back here at 7 o'clock.